Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet subscribed and help the channel uh, grow so I can make more videos. Okay, with that out of the way, let's continue our point of sale uh, tutorial. Now, we have to keep in mind that uh, creating a point of sale is like making two apps because you're using two languages to create your system. So this view we see here is the normal uh, point of sale view that your cashier is going to see. So this one works with JavaScript. So most of this will work with uh, JavaScript because things need to respond in real time. And so it's going to work with the code that is inside the browser. But then we'll need it to communicate with PHP on the other side, on the server side. So that kind of makes it like you're creating two apps. Now, in here, we want to be able to load these products dynamically because right now these are just HTML. Uh, we just pasted these with HTML, but we want them to load dynamically so that we can have actual data on these guys so that when we click on this, we can actually add the item here. Now, in order for us to add an item, we need to use the new product page but in order for us to use the new product page, we need to be logged in. And in order for us to be logged in, we need to be signed up, right? So it's time to create those, uh, the, to start coding in PHP so that we can sign up, log in, and finally add a product. So let's see how that process will go. Now, to begin with, we need to be able to connect to our database. So we've created a database already but we need a connection there. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to have to create a function. Now, I will be using object-oriented PHP. However, because I understand that some of you do not understand OOP, so what we will do is we will start with the regular method of doing things, and then you will see how that naturally evolves into object-oriented programming. So to begin with, I'm going to go to my functions page and create a function that will help us connect to the database. So let's see how we can do that. Now, I will go to app and then we have core and functions. So right in functions here, I'm going to create a function. So we're going to call this function query since it's going to run a query for us, right? So I'll do this and then we can have a a function like this. Now query will take one or two parameters here. Let's do query like this and then it will take two parameters. The other is data. So I'm going to set this data to an empty array like this or you can also do it this way. Same thing. So what I'm doing here is that I'm expecting a query, which is a string, but I don't want to have to start escaping the variables in there because of SQL injection. So for those of you that do not know, uh, when you're running queries, you can write something like query is equal to, and then you say select uh, all from users table where ID is equal to, and then you will put a variable in there called ID, uh, maybe limit one like this. So this is a very typical query, right? Now, the only problem here is that uh, ID is okay like this if you are sure that the user has sent you an actual ID because these IDs are taken from the URL, right? Right in there. Now, this URL can be edited by anyone. So which means I can create a string because I know that this ID is going right inside the query, I can create a, a string here. Instead of putting a number in the URL there, which could be like this, where ID is equal to 15, instead I can put strings that are special like this and then do that, uh, which effectively makes, uh, or I can do this. Uh, let me put that. So as you can see here, this becomes a, um, a query by itself and then it ignores whatever comes after this. So in this way I can manipulate the query and then create 
uh, what is known as SQL injection. So I can inject something in the database that is not supposed to be there. So to prevent this, what we do is we use prepared statements where a statement is prepared in advance and then the statement is told where the empty variables are so that regardless what those variables are, the uh, database will know that this part of it is a query, but this is a variable in here. So if you want to know more about uh, prepared statements, I have videos on the channel that you can check out. But however, what we do here is we use prepared statements. So we send the variables separate to the query. So we send in the query and the query is prepared so that the database knows where, which slots to expect variables. And then we send the variables separately. That way, whether those variables contain strange and harmful data, it won't matter because they are handled separately to the actual query. They have no way of manipulating the query at that point. So this is why we're doing it like this. Now, it's not every query that will require uh, a variable like this. Sometimes you want to read all records from users. So you're just going to have a query that looks like this and say select all from users. So there are no variables in here. This is why I've set it to sometimes be just an empty array. That way I don't need to even add it. I make it optional like this. That way the function will run even though I just supply the query itself and not this. So I hope that explanation suffices. Now we're going to need a connection, of course. So uh, we can pretend for now that we have a connection already. So what I can do is create a function here, maybe that creates a connection. So I'll call this one connect like this. So maybe we can be more specific and say db connect like so. Okay, so that's a function we will use to connect to our database. So the things we need now are the DB name. So let's create uh, variables like this. So say DB name is equal to, now our DB is called point of sale underscore DB. We need a DB user. So the user, the default user is root. Uh, now if uh, I think this is the default user. If you did, uh, when you're creating your MySQL, when installing MySQL on your system, if you added a uh, password and user, those are the things you're going to have to put here. So for those that have not messed around with the default values, it's usually root and then empty for password. But if you're using mump, the password is probably root as well. So we have that, we have that, and we need the driver name as well. So that's the DB driver, and our driver in this case is MySQL. Okay. Very cool. So we have all the params that we need to make a connection. We have the DB name, we have the DB user, the password, and the driver. So we are using MySQL. This is good because you can always change this to SQLite if you want. Now, uh, we are using PDO to connect. This is PDO, which is PHP Data Objects. The reason we're using PDO is because we want to easily be able to switch between databases type. So, uh, like I said, we will use SQLite eventually. And so by using PDO, we're making sure that it's easy to transition to a different database. Because if I use this uh, usual my SQL uh, connect function like this, uh, this is very specific to my SQL. So it would be a pain for me to connect, to use this to connect to SQLite. It's just not possible. So instead we're going to use PDO. So I'll create a variable called connect or con for short, and then I'll say new PDO. Now, every time you see the word new, it just means we are creating an instance of a class. So it's like, um, how do I explain this? Uh, let's say we have, imagine you have a blueprint for a house, right? So you have a blueprint like this. So you say blueprint 
is equal to and then you describe your house you know maybe there's uh, one chair and then uh, there will be two dogs at the house uh, maybe it has 20 walls whatever it is you know uh, your blueprint is going to have certain properties now if you want to create a copy of this blueprint you're going to say something like c is equal to new blueprint right like so so what you're doing here you're saying c is equal to a copy of this that way i make a copy i'm not manipulating the original i'm just making a copy of the item and then doing certain things to it uh, so that whatever i change with within c here does not affect the original so i can make another copy of the original and put it inside d like this and this will be a separate copy of exactly the same thing so this is exactly what we're doing here so pdo is a class that comes with php and it's got properties inside just like these and those are functions that use that it uses to connect to a database and so we're just making a copy of it so we can manipulate what we want here without affecting the original so whenever you see that new just keep in mind we are making a copy of a blueprint so in the case of a house for example yeah if this was a house like this it makes more sense you say house is equal to this when i make a copy it's like in real life uh, the class is represents a a blueprint that paper you have that describes your house and then every time you give that paper to the builder the builder is going to build you a house which is a copy of the blueprint so the house is real but the blueprint is just a blueprint so you can make several copies of that house from that piece of paper so these are real objects this is the class so hopefully I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever but in order to make a connection we have to have a connection string here so it's it goes like this you put a string there then you put a comma and then you put the user uh, so db user here db user and then you put a comma and then you put the db uh, password and then a comma and then you put the I think that's about it yeah and then we have a string here so the string contains the driver first so mysql and full colon then from there we um, from the full colon we put the host yeah this is what i forgot here so db host so where is the db this is what the host is so the database could be on a website so this host could be something like www.website.com like that to know where to look for that database but since our database is on our local machine we're going to say local host like this so here we say host is equal to local host and then we put a semicolon there so keep in mind semicolon there and we put the user so our user is root no not the user sorry the user is here and password is here so here we put the db name i can't remember if i have to leave put an underscore between db and name i can't remember however the db name is post underscore db so this is our connection string and then this is how we connect but we did use variables here so we can replace these values with variables that way we don't have to mess around with a string we can just change values from here and to update them but before we even do that let's make sure that everything is connecting properly so here what i would do is i want to uh, use the show function here and just do show uh, con so let's see if the connection comes back as an actual object right and then there's db connect here so i'll copy this db and run it immediately the page loads so regardless where we are loading this page it will run so i'm going to refresh and i expect to see something and as you can see here it says this is a valid pdo object which means things did go well but if i do make a mistake here for example let's see what we will get and refresh you see i get a fatal error saying unknown database 
epos db so that means it couldn't find this database right so let's remove that let's change something about the local host here and let's see what error we get right so refresh and there we go uh, fatal error so if fatal error means it the program couldn't continue so it says uh, no such host is known so that's the error right there so no such uh, host is known so we can uh, know that it's the host with a problem if i uh, remove I, I mess up the driver of course it's going to tell me that the driver could not be found so could not find driver so this is how you can figure out which part of this isn't working well another way to do this is you can use a try catch uh, now the try catch is good you can use it for a lot of uh, things so you can i hope i'm typing this i, I barely use the try catch uh, thing here so forgive me if i forget something uh exception hmm i actually have no idea how to write this wow it's been so long you know uh, exception e i think let's use pdo exception e like this let's see what happens here so what the try catch is supposed to do is that you put your code in the try and if you suspect that there could be an error uh, an error is very possible with your code so you put that code there and then every error that is found here is going to the moment an error is found here uh, the the code won't continue it will skip over to this section and then you can display the error so here what i want to do is show the error so here i will mute that but i want to echo the error so the error is going to be inside the e get message like that that's where it's going to be so hopefully i haven't mistaken anything here so the reason i put pdo exception here is because i wanted to know that i'm looking just for the pdo exception just any error to do with pdo however normally you would just put exception like this i think it should work but let's see what happens so let's refresh and syntax error unexpected token line 38 so i have missed something here what have I missed? Try catch. Uh, wait. Okay, token that, expecting that. Hmm. Why? What have I done wrong here? This looks pretty standard to me, but I think I may have done something wrong. Okay, let's hold on for a second. If you have ever have a problem with your PHP, just type uh, PHP try catch, something like this. You know, there's plenty of help on the internet. And let's go here, uh, php.net, catch exceptions. Let's go and see. So good websites are th uh, websites like 3W, 3W schools, php.net, and of course, the Stack Overflow, where you can see what others have done um yes i just want to see the format of the try catch where is this so there's try this catch wow it looks like i've done exactly this okay so i think where i made a mistake is i shouldn't have put the brackets over the exception here so let's see if that solves the problem um back here and let's try that oh good 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 so there we go no errors were found but let me put an error intentionally there and let's see what we get and you see we just get the error message itself could not find driver so this is a cleaner way of figuring out errors so we could leave that try catch there so if i now refresh uh, instead of could not find driver you see this is the error we get php network get address no such host is known Okay, so we leave the try catch. It looks like a good thing. All right, so if all goes well and there is no error, we return the connection down here like this. Okay, and also let's uh, stringify this. We're going to change this, but let's do that in the next video. So far, so good. We've seen that we've made a valid connection to the uh, to the database if you don't see an error 
then you've made a good connection. All right, so let's continue in the next video.